Hi, today on Five Bytes we'll be looking at quantitative traits um, and quantitative genetics generally. Um, so there are two classification of traits. You've got the discontinuous uh, traits, so traits that only have a few distinct phenotypes. That's your classic Mendelian uh, transmission. Uh, and these classes can be used to predict the genotypes of the individuals. Um, for example, if we cross the tall and a short pea plant and look at the F1 plants, uh, we know the genotype of the short plants and we can give a generalised genotype for the tall plants. Um, furthermore, if we know the genotype, then we can predict the phenotype of the plant. The other type of trait is a continuous trait, or traits that have an apparent continuous distribution of phenotypes. So rather than discrete classes, when a segregating population is analysed, a continuous distribution of phenotypes is found. Um, the distribution resembles a bell-shaped curve for a normal uh, distribution. And these types of traits are called continuous traits and cannot be analysed in the same manner as discontinuous traits. Um, because continuous traits are often measured and given a quantitative value, they are often referred to as quantitative traits. And quantitative genetics is the study of the inheritance of continuous traits. Now, why do some traits have continuous phenotypes? There are two main reasons, um, that, which are not mutually exclusive either. So the first reason is that you might have numerous genes affecting the expression of a trait. So the number of genotypes and thus the number of phenotypes is large and appears continuous. The second reason is uh, in the environment. So if environment factors affect the expression of a trait, um, then each genotype is capable of producing a range of phenotypes, uh, which is known as the norm of reaction. The norm of reaction refers to the array of phenotypes that result from a given uh, genotype, um, and it shows that heritability measurements only apply in the environment in which they are measured. This is really important. The norm of reaction curves are generated by plotting the phenotype of one genotype uh, in each environment and uh, can then be used to de determine the phenotypic distribution of a trait uh, that we see over a wide range of environments. How do you tell if you are dealing with Mendelian or quantitative genetics? Well, first look at the size of the phenotypic differences between genotypes um, and then compare that to the individual differences within a genotype. If the first, so the differences between, is larger than the, the differences within a genotype, then you're dealing with Mendelian uh, genetics. If, if the opposite, if you've got a wider variation of individual differences within a genotype compared to between genotypes, then you're looking at quantitative genetics. What sort of questions can we answer with quantitative statistics? Well, you can try and work out what proportion of the differences in phenotypes of a certain trait result from differences in genotype and what proportion is due to the environment, so the nature versus nurture argument. What are the norms of reactions for genotypes that influence a trait? How many genes influence a trait and what are the contributions of each trait? How rapidly does selection for a continuous trait occur? Is there non-nuclear inheritance? How do alleles at different loci interact additively, epistatically? Um, so we need, do need to cover um, some of the essential statistics that are used in quantitative traits. Um, so because quantitative traits exhibit a continuous distribution of phenotypes, they cannot be analysed in the same manner as traits controlled by a few genes. Rather, these traits are described in terms of statistical parameters. The two main primary statistics used are the mean and the variance. But you also need the distribution, you might need the mode, uh, the, and you want to look at correlation and uh, regression. Partitioning the variance. As we discussed earlier, the metric value or phenotypic value for a specific individual is the result of both genetic factors, environmental factors and their interaction. 
Uh, so you would first start by measuring the total phenotypic variation in a trait, uh, and then partition that uh, total phenotypic variance into uh, the different components. So uh, the first is uh, the genetic component, which itself can be divided into the additive genetic variance, uh, the dominance variance, and the interaction variance. So the additive uh, genetic variance uh, means that each allele contributes to the genotype, uh, a, p a particularly a fixed value to the metric value, um, whereas the dominance uh, variance takes into account that heterozygotes are frequently not the intermediate phenotype, but rather show a, domino a dominant phenotype. Uh, so each allele is not equal. Uh, and finally, the interaction variance, this takes into account any epistatic effects. So interactions that are associated with uh, interactions between the genes. Um, and the second uh, main part uh, is the environmental aspect. So um, this can also be, be broken down into the uh, environmental variance um, due to general effects, the uh, variance due to special reversible effects, or the variance due to maternal effects. Um, you also have the covariance between an environment and a genotype, and uh, finally the uh, genetic environment uh, interaction. So by performing specific experiments, uh, quantitative geneticists can estimate the proportion of the total variance that is attributable to the total genetic variance and to the environmental genetic variance. If geneticists are trying to improve a specific quantitative trait, uh, for example uh, crop yield or weight gain in an animal, uh, then estimates of the proportions of each of these variances to the total variance provide direction to their research. Uh, for example, if a large proportion of the variance is genetic, then gains can be made from selecting individuals with the metric value you wish to obtain. On the other hand, if the genetic variance is low, uh, which implies that the environmental variance is high, more success would be obtained if the environmental conditions under which the individual will be grown are optimised. Coming on to heritability, 